In this final lab, you will be investigating a relationship between two numeric variables in your final project data sets. To illustrate the commands in Minitab, I will be using a data set, the data set from our opening week surveys and looking at a relationship between risk score and fastest speed driven. Now the first step in describing the relationship between new two numeric variables is to create a scatter plot and just kind of get a general picture of what the relationship might look like. To do that in Minitab, you can simply go to Graph Scatter Plot. And for now, we're going to do a simple scatter plot. And as a Y variable, we will put in our fastest speed. We're going to use that as our response. And we'll put risk score as an X variable. And we'll go from there. So we can see that there is sort of a weak relationship between these, but there might be a slight positive trend. And so we'll actually fit a regression line to see if there is a significantly positive slope or not. Also notice that there are some unusual observations here. There are these zeros, students who have never driven, and there also are about four students who drove much faster than typical students in the data set and may have been subject to measurement bias of some sort. So let's start off by fitting a linear model to the complete set and then we'll talk about how we can discuss the effect of these outliers and go further from there. So to fit a linear model, you go to stats, regression, regression, fit regression model. And we're going to use, as I mentioned, our response fastest speed. And for predictors, we're going to just put in risk score for now. Okay. If we click on OK, we get a whole bunch of information output to us. The first thing we want to look at is what were the actual coefficients in our model. And that is given right here in this summary of the coefficients. This right here is the slope of the variable risk score. And this would be the y-intercept. And we can see looking at the p-value for the uh, for risk score that this is a significantly non-zero term in the model, meaning that there is a significant correlation between risk score and fastest speed driven. Other information you can gather from this is the R squared value, which as we discussed in class is a measure of the goodness of fit of a linear model. In this case, it's fairly small. Only about 10% of the variability in fastest speed is explained by its relationship with risk score. And also scrolling down the this page, we can also get some additional information about which observations in our data fet set had unusually large residuals, meaning they were you know, outliers in some sense, and which ones were extremely influential data points as well, meaning they significantly impacted the fit more than kind of a typical data point would. So if we look at this list, we can see that sure enough, a lot of the observations with zero fast to speed appear on here, right? As do all of the observations with really high speeds. And there's a few others that are classified as influential observations for one reason or another, probably because those ones had a particularly high value for risk score. Excuse me about that. So what we could do is we can subset our data set to remove the zeros and the extremely fast speeds and see if rerunning the regression gives us a more accurate model or if anything changes kind of in terms of the goodness of fit for our model. So to subset a data set in Minitab, which you may need to do for your final project as well, you go to the data subset worksheet option. And when you subset a worksheet, you can either specify which rows to include or which rows to exclude. I'm going to specify which rows to include. Now, I want to include all rows in which the fastest speed was greater than zero. I don't want to include the equal to zero. And I want to include rows where the fastest speed was less than, let's say, 160. Now, if we click OK, you will have created a subset here of your original data set, which includes only those rows that match that condition we put into the options there. And now if we go and create a scatter plot once again with the same two variables, we see that the zeros and the extremely large observations have been removed. Right? And if we go back and fit a regression model here, then we still have some unusual observations. 
Uh, and actually, not much has changed in terms of the goodness of fit of our model. The R squared is similar. However, notice that our coefficients have actually drastically changed. We now have increased this, almost doubled the y-intercept here. And the slope has almost been cut in half as well, right? which, which is kind of an interesting impact. So, you know, in this particular situation, you might want to show both scatter plots and both fits and discuss why one may be better or worse in some scenarios than the other. For this particular situation, I would say that this model is probably better for describing the fastest speed and risk score relationship for students who actually have driven, right? Assuming that those students who entered really high values are either extremely rare in the population or were actually subject to measurement bias. In other words, they either exaggerated or they entered their results in kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour or something like that. Now, additionally, you can look at the uh, the plot of the residuals, which is something we discussed in class as a good way of seeing if there's any patterns, any other violations of the typical regression assumptions. So to do that, you go back to the place where you fit the regression model, but click on graphs and see there's all these options for residual plots here. All right. What we're going to do here is look at the plot of the residuals versus the actual risk score here. So residuals versus variables. This means this is the x values, and then we're going to plot those versus the residuals. And we're also going to look at a histogram of the residuals to see if they're roughly normally distributed or not. So if we click OK now, we get two plots here. The histogram of the residuals is a little bit skewed, but not too badly. There's a couple outliers down here on this tail. And in this plot right here, we can see there's certainly no pattern in terms of where the model is over and underestimating, as indicated by either you know, positive or negative residuals. There's also, there is a little bit of more spread in the middle here, but probably not enough to make us doubt the kind of constant variance assumption for the regression model.